Hi everyone, just given a chance to maybe look at some solutions for your quiz. If you're studying for that quiz, this might help. Number one, name an altitude. Well, an altitude, what we need to remember, it goes from a vertex, segment goes vertex to perpendicular. So here's a vertex, A. And this is going down to B, but notice that's not where the perpendicular is. The perpendicular is from G, so that is not an altitude. Here's a vertex C, and I don't see the perpendicular there. So let's try D, vertex, follow this along to the perpendicular here, and segment DE looks like our solution. That is the altitude. Number two, perpendicular bisector. Now we do have another perpendicular here that this side is perpendicular to line GB. So GB is our perpendicular bisector. Number three, name an angle bisector. So one of these angles, it's not marked here, it's not marked here, it is marked here. So an angle bisector, C, angle C is being bisected by CF, and that's ray CF. And then name a median. A median goes from vertex to midpoint on the opposite side. These terms are important in order to be able to solve the problems that you need to do here. So I need a midpoint which looks like B because I see this line here and this line here so B is the midpoint of CD so A to B that segment is vertex to midpoint alright next we will look at numbers 5 through 7 have these rules right here when the figure Use the figure to determine which statement is true for the given information. Okay, median. Remember what we just said, vertex to midpoint. Well, let's look at the triangle. If C is the midpoint, then BC and CD are congruent. So BC is equal to CD. This is the only thing that is true well, not the only thing that is true, but it's the only thing we can absolutely say is true if AC is a median. Now, if AC is an angle bisector, the angle that is being bisected is this angle right here. Angle BAC and angle DAC would be congruent. Angle BAD is being bisected. Angle BAC is congruent to angle DAC. So if AC is an angle bisector, that's what happens. If AC is an altitude, altitude is vertex, I'm writing this again, to perpendicular. If AC is an altitude, then we are seeing a 90 degree angle. Even though it doesn't look like it's a 90 degree angle, that's supposed to be a 90 degree angle. So the measure of angle ACD would have to be 90 if AC is an altitude. Okay, so that's the terminology of lesson 5.1 that we spent some time on. Make sure you study these things, know what these terms are. You know what an angle bisector is, you know what a perpendicular bisector is, but these were new to the chapter. Now number eight, the longest side of triangle DEF, and we have the three measures here, 108 degrees, 62 degrees, and 10 degrees. The longest side is opposite the biggest angle. Well, angle E is 108 degrees, the side opposite that is segment DF. Now which angle has the greatest measure on number 9? Well 9 is the longest side, AC is the longest side, and its angle that's opposite that is angle B. And that's it. That's all we got to do there. Alright, let me find another set of multiple choice questions. Don't have the order quite. Okay. So.
Okay, so the next page. Oh, come on now. Maybe it's number 17. Is that the next one? I'm thinking I'm missing something here, but we'll find out. Which can be the lengths of the sides of a triangle? Well, this is the last thing we did. Let's take the two short sides. 9 plus 4 is equal to 13, and that is greater than 12, the third side. So this looks like this one can be. What I'd like to see is can these 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 is not greater than 3. 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 is not greater than 10, taking the two short sides. Square root of 2 plus square root of 5 compared to the square root of 18. Now, I don't have the calculator handy. I do have in my head a little bit that square root of 2 is around 1.4. Square root of 5, that's around 2.2 something or other. And square root of 8 is 3 times... So that's about 4.2, I think. And that's, I'm just going, just rough estimates. But if I add these two together, I get 3.6. And it is not greater than 4.2. So I'm good with A there. All right, so that's 17 on the multiple choice. Are there any other multiple choices that I'm missing here? Oh, yep, I see them. Okay, miss this. 12, 13, and 14. Now, number 12. Find the possible values for the measure of angle 1 right here. Well, this is an exterior angle. Angle 1 is, sorry. This is 62 degrees. It's one of the remote interior angles. So I know that the measure of angle 1 has to be more than that, more than 62. This one says the measure of angle 1 is greater than 62. This says the measure of angle 1 is greater than 62. And this one says the measure of angle 1 is less than 62. Get rid of that. It, we don't know the exact value, so get rid of that. Now. And then it says it has to be under 90. I don't know of any restriction there, but it does have to be under 180. So I'm going to choose A for that answer. Now, number 13, find X. Well, there's X, but I think they want us to do more than that. These are perpendicular. These are the same. That means these are the same. So the equation I'm going to solve is x plus 3 plus 5. That gives me this whole length mw is equal to 15. And that's x plus 8. Now we could go through and solve, but if I subtract 8, you're going to see that's going to be 7. Now, 14 is a pretty important problem here. It's the new, the circumcenter theorem and the circumcenter, where all of the perpendicular bisectors meet, that's one thing to know here, the circumcenter is the same distance to each vertex. There are three vertices in a triangle. The circumcenter is the point inside the triangle that is the same distance to all three. So, ABD is equal to AD, which is equal to CD. AD is six units long. BD's got to be six units long. Okay, so you got to know that the circumcenter is the same distance to each vertex. They're not making you work too hard after that, but. That's something you've got to know. All right, well, let's look on the next page. Probably starts with number one. Number one, we look at this drawing. It says, name a perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular, so I'm looking at these 90-degree angles here. Bisecting, I'm seeing these two marks here. So in this triangle right here, line ML, 
or LM, is a perpendicular bisector of psi GH. Number two, the perimeter of, where we can see it, the perimeter of P, P, R, Q, S, those four sides, the perimeter is 34. That's 10 plus 4x minus 10 plus 7 plus 2x minus 3. That is equal to 34. Find x. Well, this will help us find x. Taking the perimeter, adding four sides and setting it equal to that perimeter of 34. 4x and 2x is 6x. 10 minus 10 is 0. 7 minus 3, that is 4. 6x equals 34. 6x is 30. And x would be 5 then. 4 times 5 is 20. 20 minus 10 is 10, which is the same distance here and here. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. That makes these two the same distance. Okay. On perpendicular lines, a point from one to the other is equal. Now that's on perpendicular, so RS, this would only work if RS and PQ are perpendicular. RS is perpendicular to PQ. That's the relationship. That's what X is, that's the relationship. I am looking for number three, right there it is. Number three is talking about centroid. Centroid is the point, it's where all the medians intersect. And these are all medians. They go from vertex to midpoint, vertex to midpoint, vertex to midpoint. The medians all meet at N, N is called the centroid. Therefore, what we know, what you need to know about the centroid, the centroid theorem, if you Take 2 times the distance from midpoint to centroid. That will equal the distance from centroid to vertex. So from N to M, if you multiply that by 2, if you double it, you're going to have from I to N. That's K to N times 2 equals N to J. L to N times 2 equals N to H. That is the centroid theorem. Now, we're asked to find JN, which is vertex to centroid. In this, the only thing we really need is KN is 4. If that's 4, this is 4 times 2. JN is twice that, so JN is 8. Number 4, I'm going to skip for now. I did do a video where we found the circumcenter, and you've taken notes on that. Um, we'll skip that for now. If we need to come back to it, we'll talk about that in class. Number 5, if RU is an altitude, R U is an altitude. That means an altitude goes from vertex to perpendicular. Find X. Alrighty. I'm going to stop this right now and we'll pick up with this problem in a minute.